For me, there's so much, so many nerves going through you right now. There's so much anxiety, and, and for me, the last like thing I would always love to do is I'll go to the sidelines, get a few it. jumps, sprint down the sideline, and I knew I was ready. Jerry Magalanis is our ACC official, our referee, LaDainian Thompson, and Wesley room. Walls, the celebrity captain. Congratulations to TCU and to Ole Miss for being selected to play in the 2014 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. TCU, you are the home team. Ole Miss, you are the visiting team. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce to you the mayor of Atlanta, Mr. Kasim Reed. Mr. Reed, excuse, hold on. Mr. Reed will be tossing the coin. This is the coin. The Peach Bowl emblem is the heads. The playoff insignia is the tails. It's your choice. Tails. Tails is called. Tails, tails. Go ahead, sir. It is heads. Heads. TCU, you win the toss. TCU defers to the second half. You want the ball? Which way do you want to kick? Swing your backs around to the goal you'll be defending, gentlemen. So Ole Miss will receive the opening kick. Our eyes and ears on the field all day long will be Shannon Spake. Good afternoon, Shannon. Well, hi, Joe. Trevon Boykin told me that he watched the college football playoff selection show with just one of his teammates. He said even though Coach Patterson had prepared them for the worst, they were absolutely disappointed when they fell out of the top four. But they flipped the switch by the time they got to practice on Monday because, as Boykin said, this is their playoff. Now, the Ole Miss players know that they're not only battling TCU, but they're battling that chip that is on their shoulder, not only because they were left out of the playoff, but because of the dominance of the SEC. In fact, Cody Pruitt told me every time they play an out-of-conference team, they try to prove that the SEC is overrated. And Evan Ingram, who is absolutely high on this TCU scouting report, said he knows that they are going to be, quote, ticked off and out with something to prove. Well, Treadwell and Sanders, the starting receivers out. Ingram's going to play a big role today. This has been the Nissan pregame rush. And some have said this is arguably the most intriguing matchup of all the Bulls, considering the numbers to scoring offense against this Ole Miss defense, number one in the country. So, guys, take us through Northwestern Mutual's plan for success. Well, for Bo, he's just got to take what the defense gives him. He cannot force the ball. They also have to contain Trevon. They cannot let him beat him with his legs because he is a great athlete. And then they can't get killed by the deep ball. Trevon throws a great deep ball, and they have some big-time receivers that go up and make plays. They cannot get killed by the deep ball. And pretty clear for TCU and Gary Patterson, you've got to slow down the onslaught of that land shark pass rush. You've got to give Boykin an opportunity to do, as Tim just alluded to, make the plays. You've also got to confuse Bo Wallace, and very complex on the back end of their defense. Three weeks to prepare. Gary feels very confident about his plan. Yes, and then ultimately... Keep Paul Dawson clean. That linebacker is their biggest playmaker in All-American. You'll watch 47 from beginning to end. Jaden Oberprone kicking away to Jalen Walton from the goal line. And Walton lowers his shoulders and gets his way out just past the 25-yard line. Take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Ole Miss without their number one and two wide receivers. So really Evan Ingram is going to have to be everything. Tied in. He's going to be split outside as well. Going to be the go-to for Bo Wallace. And Tim, you and I both love what Paul Dawson brings to the table. He's one of the best linebackers in the country. He flies around and he makes plays all over the field. Bo Wallace a win today and he'd be Ole Miss's all-time wins leader at 25. He was pressured, and it's off the fingertips of big Jeremy Liggins. That was Paul Dawson, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, getting after Wallace. And he delivered a big-time shot on Bo. Well, Wallace had that curious Georgia Dome opening week against Boise. Had four touchdowns framed against three interceptions. Curious, a nice way to put it, Tess. <laughs> A euphemism for other things that more Hardy fans would say, Brock. Second and ten now. Wallace to pass again. And going to take a shot. And it's Cody Cord downfield. 
who is matched up with Tejada. It'll be third and ten for Ole Miss. Incidental contact there with Tejada, the redshirt freshman, and Cody Core. He's really filling the gap for Vince Sanders on the outside. And Hugh Freeze was very honest with us. Going to take some shots today. Going to throw five, six of these home run balls. And that's a good call. Just feet getting tangled up. Puts Ole Miss behind it, third and ten. Third and ten, empty set for Wallace. TCU brings four, and that ball is intercepted by Chris Hackett, his seventh of the year. What a start for the TCU defense. Felt the confidence yesterday. I did of Gary Patterson. He oozed with it. He really loved the three weeks to prepare for the plan with Ole Miss. Felt like his guys would get a good jump. That's a route concept. Ole Miss runs an awful lot. And you can see the redshirt junior there, Hackett, now with his seventh pick, simply staring down and reading the eyes of Bo Wallace. We can see he's been coached on that follow route over and over and over again, and he read it perfectly. Eyes and feet make the play. Travon Boykin now. He opens the game with a completion to Dotson. Josh Dotson's been a big part of the success for TCU this year. His 60th reception on the season. Speed kills. Quick game. Quick screens. Want to slow down that rush as hyped up as you know Ole Miss is going to be. Also slow down a quarterback that's also been waiting for this moment for three weeks. Get the ball out of Boykin's hands. Second and double six. Pass. This could be a double pass. Touchdown. Listen to me. Trick play to open up the game. How about it? Aaron Green, touchdown, Frogs. Former high school quarterback, Colby Lissenby. And as Oberthrone sends the extra point through. Can't script it any better than that. And they did it again here, Brock. Cannot script it any better than that. You get the takeaway, what you've done all season long, and then, Tim, you knew innovation was coming. No question about that. And it's very similar to the touchdown they had against Iowa State earlier in the year. Colby Lucindy to Aaron Green. Welcome to the New Year Six in style. Back with you here in Atlanta for the 2014 Chick fil A Peach Bowl. Great start for TCU. Trick play Lucindy to Green for a 31 yard touchdown. And you made this. You called it, Tim. You knew exactly what was coming. And it was a great job of Trevon stepping up, so he made sure it was a backwards pass. Colby Lissenby, starting wide receiver as Aaron Green came out of the backfield. With that touchdown reception. David Porter threw one against Iowa State. So many of these offensive stars for TCU are former high school quarterbacks. Bill Wallace threw the interception and set that up for the Frogs. It's Overcombe kicks away again, and it's a shorter kick that's fielded by Walton at about the five. Walton's trying to get to the edge, and he cuts back with a good return out towards the 28-yard line. Steve Wesley with the tackle. The New York Six Bowls continue today at four. It's the Vizio Fiesta Bowl. Boise State and number 10 Arizona and then Mississippi State and Georgia Tech in the Capital One Orange Bowl very intriguing matchup in South Florida with Dak Prescott going up against Georgia Tech in that triple option attack that pushed Florida State to the limit in the ACC championship game. So Bo Wallace back out there after throwing his 12th interception this year. And Itavis Mathers with a good run right up the middle for 11 yards. Ole Miss feels pretty good about what they're going to get with TCU. You're going to get typically a six man box there. The four down linemen and the two linebackers. After that pick, you can expect to see some heavy run. 
Keep it on the ground again and first met by Paul Dawson. So active, Sam Carter came to clean it up. There is Carter. Started his TCU career as a quarterback. He's really a coach on the field. Veteran fifth year senior for Gary Patterson's defense. As Walton was met right away by Chucky Hunter. We can talk about the team defensive speed of, of Ole Miss all day long. I, I think the Horn Frogs got tired of hearing about it because he's got these boys move as well. That's Chucky Hunter right in the middle. Four tackles for loss against Iowa State in slow developing plays, especially laterally to me, play into the strength of this TCU defense. And now this is where Bo needs to be very smart and take what the defense gives him. Do not force this. Third and 16. Trying to avoid two straight three and outs. Tremendous defensive effort that time. As downfield. He was trying to find him. That's Markel back there, the true freshman again in these games and in this game because of the injuries of the top two and very little separation. These TC guys have had three weeks to look at so many of these route combinations. They pattern read and they are breathing down the neck of these receivers right now. Denzel Johnson coming up big there, stretching out against Pack. Perry with the rugby style. It's end over end rotation and a fair catch at about the 22 yard line, a 44 yard punt. For Perry, seven zip frogs on top. Ole Miss and TCU players enjoying the new College Football Hall of Fame here at Atlanta. We had a great visit this week. Bo Wallace hasn't had a great start to this game. 0 for 4, an interception thrown. TCU back out there on offense. Boykin gives to Green, and he is bottled up. Shannon. Well, Sinquez Go uh, Golson, the senior safety, he was for Ole Miss. He was on the sideline on the trainer bench. You see that black sleeve around his right knee. The trainer told me it is a knee sprain, guys, but I did see him running around the sidelines, sprinting up and down, and he looked good and obviously back out there. Unconventional formation for TCU as they get it to Dotson. They only kept three linemen in. They flanked everybody else out to either side and quickly got it out to Dotson. Golson, Shannon referenced with the sprained knee, a consensus first team All America. And this needs him at 100% health. And they need a three and out here to turn some real early momentum and a favorable down and distance for this group. Third and six. Empty set. Sonina in motion. Boykin, quick strike to Dotson, and that's a first down for TCU. And he's a slinger. You watch him fundamentally. He's not textbook, but he gets the ball out of his hand, and Dotson, his number one go-to guy, not just on deep balls, third downs as well, moving the sticks. Back to Green, they go, and that's a tackle for a loss that time by C.J. Johnson. And this kid does not run like a lot of defensive ends. He is explosive and he is fast. It is hard to get outside of him. Two runs, very little movement for that TCU offensive line. Backs him up to a second and 14. Green remains in the backfield with Boykin. Now they go empty here and they swing it out to Green. And he picks up one good block and then hits the accelerator and cuts back. For yet another TCU first down. That's a gain of 14. Leading tackler Mike Hilton saw that. He was the field corner that time. He could see the bubble happen in front of him. He tries to break on it, gets blocked, and opens up a void that TCU takes advantage of. Stack twins here on first down. Slanina. Look at the pace TCU is moving with here. Great job getting it out fast by Boykin. You play in these spread systems, you got to be like second baseman and shortstops. Just get no the question. ball out of your hand, find fun angles at times. Getting the ball from point A to point B as fast as he possibly can on those quick screens, really critical. See that sidearm sling, good for six yards there. Offset pistol now. 
Second and four. Here's Green again. And a good slivery move. And as he should have enough for a first down, Brown had to make the tackle there. Aaron Green's averaging 7.7 .7 per carry. Now on the pitch, that time wrapped up by Brown. You're playing the number one scoring defense in all of college football. We played against some pretty good groups. You want to go really fast. It's built into this system anyway. But TCU in their game plan over the last three weeks really wanted to crank up the speed. Gary Patterson said in the lead up and the build up, their final practice is upwards of 120 team reps in less than two hours. Blazing fast right now. Boy can empty on second and seven over the middle. That is complete to Slanina. He's going to be a yard short of the line to make. It'll be third and short from there. And remember what Hugh Freeze told Shannon pregame. TCU was going to get some plays that he really felt like his guys were going to have to catch that second wind. Calm down and relax a little bit. In order to do that, though, you've got to find a way to get off the field on these third downs. 288-pound Cliff Murphy comes in the game here on third and short. And as they also bring Hicks and Deontay Green out onto the field. Chance to be aggressive here with field position. Watch 43 in the backfield. See if they follow him here. And they're going to use a timeout as the play clock was counting down. We will take it with them. Gary Patterson's Frogs moving fast here. Third and one when we return. Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. The number eight Michigan State, number five Baylor, New Year's Day, 1230 Eastern on ESPN. Of course, TCU knows all about their rivals. 61-58, the lone blemish. And that 21-point fourth quarter lead did the Frogs. And here they have a touchdown lead early. Tenth play of the drive for the TCU offense. Two downs here. No question. That's big Cliff Murphy, 288-pounder, who's in with Travoris Johnson in the backfield on third down and one. Of course, Boykin's a good runner himself. He's going to pass instead. They're going to go downfield. And that is beyond the reach of Dotson. So they take a shot on third and one. I can't tell you how rare that is. He is a is jump so ball rare. passer. Absolutely. He had both of those guys. If he just gives them a chance, that's six. He intentionally throws it up. He puts air on it and allows Dotson to go up and get it. That time trying to be a little too precise. So now as you guys thought, here is the second chance at picking up that one yard. Johnson remains the tailback as they split out Murphy and he passes again and this time on the slant is complete to Emmanuel Porter so TCU moves the chains and the true freshman I love it I love the courage and conviction of this offensive staff don't care who it is when their numbers call true freshman with the big fourth down conversion they snap that ball with 29 on the play clock as Johnson struggles to gain much there you almost get the sense that you'll You'll sacrifice some level of numbers and execution just to establish the tempo. But you got to really like the poise of Trevon to come up on fourth down after he overshot it on third down and put it right in his chest. Fourth down pass for nine yards to Porter. And a fresh set of downs. Now a second and eight as Green has come back in at running back. And Boykin, another quick out this time. Slanina as he turned up field. And got it to the 21 yard line. Seven for eight passing in one shot. Just the one jump ball, the go route. He actually overthrew everything else. Look at the, how quick the ball is out of his hand. Do not allow the strength, that pass rush, to get anywhere near you. Third down and four. This time he gives to Green. What a duck under move as Green picks up the first down. Good balance that time by Aaron Green. How big is that on a third down, a third and four, and to have the capability to trust your run game enough to put yourself now in the red zone and really give yourself an opportunity in this first quarter to establish your plan.
Gibbs again. And into the end zone again. A touchdown catch, and now a 15-yard touchdown run for Aaron Green. Slippery. One cut, Aaron Green, such a nice fit, playing for the injured B.J. Catalan over the last month of this season. The number one rusher in the mix of the run in the past. Execution in every phase of the offense has put more points on the board with this extra point than Ole Miss averages a game all season long. Green has played so well over the course of the last month with B.J. Catalan out injured, a 15-play drive and a two-touchdown lead. Aerial coverage here in Atlanta is provided by Goodyear. Tires for superior performance that carry you to your destination. Goodyear, more driven. Joe, Tim, Brock, Shannon with you here at the 2014 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl or TCU. How about this kind of statement for folks that said they shouldn't be in the college football playoff? 14 nothing over Ole Miss. Direct TV takes you inside the drive as we take a look. At TCU. Strong safety, Chris Hackett had to be thinking to himself, Bo, throw it, throw it, throw it. He reads, he reacts, the critical turnover, something TCU does better than anybody in the country, and then the aggressiveness right off the turnover. When you're facing one of the best defenses in the country, you have to be aggressive. That is something that Doug Meacham and Sonny Cumbie, the two offensive coordinators for TCU, have been all game long, and it's paid off so far. Aaron Green had the touchdown catch. Off the wide receiver option throw and then Aaron Green had the 15 yard touchdown run. And TCU looks every bit the part of what they were thought of all year long as elite. Ryan DiNucci now taking over the kickoff chores here. And he puts this a yard into the end zone for Jalen Walton who coverage finds at the 16 yard line. Good job by Kenny Iloka. You've, you've coached Bo Wallace. What's he telling himself right now? This kid has been in a lot of tough situations. He's faced a lot of adversity in his career. He knows how to bounce back. Let's see how he handles it right here. You spent time with him this offseason, Tim. Working with quarterback specialists so you understand his mechanics and where he's had growth. How about some easy completions? We've seen post routes, comebacks, in cuts. How about just finding an easy, easy little bubble screen to get your quarterback in rhythm? Like that, Brock, as he does with Pack. And Pack fights for extra yardage. First completion of the day for Bo Wallace. And you see a change in TCU's defense right there. Ole Miss went three by O. Oh. They kept Evan Ingram on the one side, but they know, but TCU knows how good he is, so they kept their best corner on that side just to watch out for Evan Ingram. Second and three. Ole Miss needs to get in a rhythm here. And Walton gets only a yard there, so it'll be third and about two as Chucky Hunter clogged up the middle. Miss cannot afford more damage to their offensive line. It's Robert Conyers it's being attended by the medical staff. Remember, they have a true freshman already starting at right guard. And as Aaron Morris, the left guard, tore his ACL. So they shuffle things around. This is what happened with Conyers. Paul, Paul Dawson, Dawson came in there. Yeah, he is going to be, you're going to call his name all evening long. Leads his team in tackles and tackles for loss. And when you're the only player in all of college football with over 100 tackles, five sacks, and four picks, speaks to your All-American status. And Jeremy Liggins, who weighs nearly 300 pounds, is the Wildcat quarterback on third and two. And he gives to Wilkins, and Wilkins is cut down in the backfield. 
Derek Kindred came surging in, and Wilkins had nowhere to go. These guys are just playing downhill. You saw it in coverage earlier. You've seen it in the run game. They have such a feel for what Ole Miss wants to do within this plan, and it's allowing everybody offensively and defensively to play faster than the Rebels are right now. Cameron Eccles Looper. Back to take this punt by Gleason. And that is downed at the 11 yard line. You know, one of the big things we talked about in the lead up to this game would be the mentality of TCU. Being snubbed from the college football playoff and landing here in Atlanta. I think we've gotten that answer, haven't we? Oh, absolutely. They're playing with a huge chip on their shoulder. And defensively for TCU, they're not scared or threatened by anything. And they're playing downhill on every single play. One of the things that really jumped out, you know, we get three weeks of bowl preparation as well. It was just the teaching and the coaching of the Horn Frogs. They are so on point. And that offensive plan, they script their first 15, couldn't be better. And defensively, I've said this a number of times already, but you can just see it in their reactions. They have a real feel for what Hugh Freeze and Ole Miss are trying to do against them. Javon Boykin, fourth in the Heisman Trophy voting, back out there. And that's incomplete for Hicks. And they call that an incompletion. It was not a backward pass as Connor was quick to get there. So if you're all Miss defensively, you just got to settle down. And I think continue to be pretty simple. You've attacked the gaps. Your corners are flying around. Guys are there to finish. You just have to simply get off the field on these third downs. Obviously second and ten here. Pumps looking Hicks his way. And now the pressure from behind. And he's lucky he held on to that ball as C.J. Johnson came crashing in. Ole Miss changed up the front right there. They went three down, walked up two linebackers in the gap so they could get Kamdichi one-on-one on the center. And Boykin has to be really aware with the pursuit of the Land Sharks. They get a number of guys to the football in a third and very long situation. And now Boykin's out of the gun at his own one-yard line. Third and 16, bad snap. It was low from his end zone, downfield, and it's incomplete. So that's the first bite of the Land Shark defense attack that we've seen today. We had a real sense that center Joey Hunt was going to get a defender right on his nose. That when you watched him throughout this season, when he struggles with his snaps, it's because those big boys are breathing right down his neck. That was unfortunate for Boykin because that missed snap caused the incompletion. And now Ethan Perry punting from his end zone as Pack. We'll secure it just beyond midfield a 48 yard punt for Perry. Let's check in on the field with Shannon. Well you guys have really been saying exactly what this defense for Ole Miss has been hearing since the start of the game settle down. Remember coach free said don't be surprised if we get off to a slow start. They cannot duplicate the tempo of this TCU offense. Also the emotions he thought it could get to this defense. But you can see that they're really starting to come around. Chris Kiffin also had a message. He said listen we knew we were going to have to deal with the jump cuts. We watched it on film. We scouted it. Just stay in your gap. They were listening. And offensively, you've got to capitalize here. You've got tremendous field position for the first occasion. You've got to find a way if you're Bo Wallace to get points on the board. Wallace. Oh, boy. Intercepted again. Tim, you saw it coming. And so did Derek Kindred. You just can't force it. Throw it over his head. Throw it out of bounds. Give your receiver a shot. That's just not an opportunity where you can back shoulder. You back shoulder a football when the DB doesn't have his eyes on you. But when he's watching you, you cannot throw a back shoulder. We talk all the time, and we'll see it in the Orange Bowl tonight, about preparing for a team and not giving them a good enough look. I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about TCUs back into their defense and trying to replicate and prepare for it because they do jump routes. They do stare down your eyes. They have a tremendous feel. That looked open to ball. And initially that looked wide open to him, but he loses sight of the safety, which once again makes him pay. A lateral, and that's a live ball, and it's into the hands of the Rebels. They tried to swing Green out of the backfield, and it failed. C.J. Johnson, right place, right time, turnover.
We love the aggressiveness. Right? You love the aggressiveness. You love the double pass on the second play of the game. We were just praising the offensive staff for the conviction they have to just simply cut it loose. And once again, trying to capitalize on the turnover, but the lack of execution on a play that's very high risk with the times very low return. So Bo Wallace gets a second chance right back out there. And he pulled. And that wasn't a great choice as Dawson and Hackett were quick to get to him. <laughs> that may not have been a great choice, but that's how I'm tired of trying to figure out these safeties. And I'm going to put my head down and try to get something going. And you have to like the courage. He is trying to get something going for his offense. He is trying to will it to be done. That's what you see on that play right there. But you also see two defenders. Two defenders. That front four right now. Keeping containment, holding the point, and allowing these linebackers to do exactly what Patterson wants Dawson to do to be free to finish as he's done all season long. And number 47 is something special. Paul Dawson. Second and nine. Wallace has time, and that is incomplete. And some pressure came from Pearson. It'll be a third and nine for Ole Miss. And you can see the hands go up in the air and this is a reflection of the two picks and trying to have a feel for where the safeties are. Bo actually has an in cut. He's got a 10 yard in cut right in front of the safety Kindred. He's holding it. He has to be confident and has to let it go. You cannot play tentative right now in this game. He's one of seven for seven yards and two interceptions and now facing a third and nine. Play clock is down to three. They weren't set. Steps up, and they're going to whistle this here. There's going to be motion. Full start offense, number 17, was not set before the snap. Five yard penalty, third down. And Seven Ingram is going to need to get involved if this offense wants to find success. And if I'm Coach Freeze right here, I'm not forcing this. I'm doing a draw, maybe a bubble, uh, possibly a screen, getting us out of both hands pretty quickly. Empty look on third and 14. New Freeze is working that gum pretty good with the start of this game. Ingram's in the slot to the boundary side. They only bring four against Wallace. Now extending the play. And taken down after a gain of just three. As it was Tevin Lawson who tracked down Bo Wallace. Nowhere to go. A four man rush. You rush four, you still affect the pocket, and you put these seven in coverage. Bo had nowhere to go with the football. They will attempt a long field goal here. This is a 52 yarder. Gary Wunderlich, his only miss of the year was a 52 yarder. Had the distance, but it was just to the left. And the flag is down back at the line of scrimmage, so they will sort this out. Jerry Magalanis and the ACC working today. The field goal was no good after the play. Personal foul, number 68 of the offense. That's a 15 yard penalty. The ball belongs to TCU. First down. Justin Bell, left guard, is playing in place of Aaron Morris for Ole Miss. It's a long, slow walk coming off the field for that Ole Miss offense. And as TCU will get great field position out of this. 
All the talk about the number one scoring defense in college football and Ole Miss this defense and Ole Miss that. And how about TCU's group in the first 15 minutes here with Gary Patterson? What a well, big that's stand what it was for over years and years and all of a sudden overshadowed by their offense this year. But the core of this team is so sound with Patterson running the defense. And another quick strike this time to listen be as Boykin has found his groove here in Atlanta. Just a great job of taking what the defense is giving him. They're playing soft. Take the underneath. Sprint to the near side. Remember how athletic he is. Look at all that green in front of him. Former wide receiver dragged down from behind that time by Thompson, but a gain of 12 for Boykin. And this is danger time for Ole Miss defensively. Not just the two touchdowns they've given up, but they've also sat on the sidelines and watched their offense not do anything with field position. And as challenged as the Rebels are on the perimeter with all the injuries and in an offensive line that is makeshift, they can't afford to dig out a too big a hole this afternoon. That ball is intercepted. Keith Lewis. Boy, did Ole Miss need that. Sloppy. Never, ever take a read for granted. That's a great job. Just seeing what they've done the last few series and undercutting it by Keith Lewis. Very athletic linebacker. That's back to back turnovers and Ole Miss with their offense and their struggles have given TCU the opportunity here in the first 15 minutes to make this a whole lot different than 14 nothing but a fumble a bad pick and now you give Ole Miss life once again. Jalen Walton tackled for a loss by Paul Dawson the only player in the country with 100 tackles five sacks four interceptions stats guy great player. And he does so much of it with instincts. He reads it so fast. He shoots the gap and he beats the guard there. Great play. Great instincts. Look at those numbers on Dawson. He was a high school wide receiver at Skyline High in Dallas. Went Juco and then found himself at TCU. Play action now. Wallace. Can't get much out of that and as he just gets ahead to the 31 where James McFarlane wraps him up. You have felt this and I have felt it. You just feel squeezed. As a quarterback right now, you're looking out there and everything is congested. There's very few clean lanes. Your run game is getting stuffed. The pocket is just squeezing all around you. What a difficult first 50 minutes for number 14. And now another difficult down and distance. Third and nine. And sacked. Chucky Hunter and Chris Bradley in that front four getting after Bo Wallace time and time again. Ole Miss just 11 yards of total offense. Glad you're with us for the 2014 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. The first of the New Year's Six Bowls. Joe Tessator, Tim Tebow, Brock Heward, and Shannon Spake here in Atlanta. TCU defense pitching that shutout 14 nothing. The setup was Ole Miss and the Rebels, the number one scoring defense. Hey, TCU number three defense in defensive efficiency this year. And as Gleason punts away. And Eccles Looper fields it but can't find much room. Of course the college football playoff gets going tomorrow. Back to back semifinal games. Oregon and Florida State will start at five in the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual. And at 830 number one Alabama number four Ohio State in the All State Sugar Bowl. And Tim you know how Urban goes about his business when it comes to these championship moments. What a great matchup. We're going to be there tomorrow. We're on a plane We're today down to New Orleans for a full day of coverage tomorrow. Boykin 
back to business as he finds Deontay Gray. Ole Miss went back to three down defensive linemen. And that up tempo of TCU. As Aaron Green is in the backfield with Travon Boykin. Gives and Green gets past the first, but cannot get past the pursuit. So it'll be third down. We had a sense sir, that we would see this kind of front that, that you were going to get everybody nose to nose and try to squeeze that run game as well and put some emphasis and pressure on Boykin. Just the TCU has played fast, gotten the ball out to help neutralize it. Third and three. Oh, two by two line. with Green. They run speed option. What a fake by Boykin. How about that pulling the string for a first down? That is a big time move. Woo. Was that Jamel Holloway back in the day? Man, oh man. On a yo yo. That's a playmaker just making a play and looking sweet. That was Tony Connor who bid on that. And another first down past midfield for the Frogs. Boykin wanted back shoulder and listen B was running a go. Two throws beyond 10 yards both been incompletions the interception on the quick little out and I will say this about that third down conversion as well that was a check. That was a hey I got three weeks for you and if they're going to come pressure us I'm an option off that in man on the line of scrimmage. That was a check because they went five down and so they audible to a speed option but Ole Miss really had it contained they handled it pretty well. Tremendous move on that speed option by Trey. And now he gives. And now Green goes. And he weaves his way through the defensive backfield of the Rebels to the 31 yard line. Finally tackled by Mel Colton. 17 yard run. Well, the Nebraska transfer watched Amir Abdullah do some of this. And that's what he's looking like here in this first quarter. Just adding the punch to that quick passing game. Boykin tried to get in space, but he couldn't find much against Marquise Haynes. Second and eight. Throw but completed to Dotson. And be third and short from there. Bolson, Sinquez Bolson had coverage there. Spreading love, six different receivers as we put ourselves once again in another critical third down. Third and two for TCU. And as he gets it to Eccles Looper and he finds his way ahead to the 20 yard line for a first down Trey Elston with the tackle of Cameron Eccles Looper. It's just a different way of running the triple option instead of pitching it he's throwing it sidearm. Quick snap again out to Porter and that was all too easy for another first down it'll be first and goal frogs. Now the difference are these third down conversions because moving the sticks really allows them to play at the speed they desire. Hicks wrapped up that time. Good play by Isaac Gross, the undersized defensive tackle. That's your guy. Yeah, he's a playmaker. 250 pounds playing on the inside in the SEC. He is fast and plays with a lot of heart. Second and goal now as they're backed up to the 12. This time Boykin takes the time to look over to Doug Meacham, the play caller on the field, and he's going to use a timeout. New offensive coordinators for TCU, Sonny Cumbie and Doug Meacham. What a difference they have made. They're knocking on the door again is TCU.
Beautiful scene of Atlanta today as aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear. Tires for superior performance that carry you to your destination. Goodyear, more driven. Joe Tessitore, Brock Heuer, Tim Tebow, and Shannon Spake here at the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. TCU. And his second and goal. Both teams now with two timeouts remaining. Touchdown, Boykin to Dotson. Two very different pictures. You see one quarterback that's confused, that's not in rhythm, that feels the pocket and everything suffocating him, and another quarterback that's playing free and easy. After even after an interception on that last drive, that ball is coming out. They're getting receivers all over the field, and that was a boy. That was a conviction throw down in the red zone. Seeing it, pulling the trigger, and finishing. The Big 12, 0 and 3 in bowl games coming into this. What a statement against an SEC team for TCU, and what a statement to the College Football Selection Committee. The frogs are rolling in the new year six. They had a little football family feud between Ole Miss and TCU here in Atlanta at the bowl lunch in the cap a week of competitions. The championship belt went to TCU, as has everything early on here in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Josh Doxson with a touchdown catch moments ago. It's 10 touchdown receptions on the year for TCU's receiver. They've done this in the first 19 minutes against the number one scoring defense, and they've also given it away twice. Two turnovers, and they still put 21 on the board. Danucci got under that a little bit, and it spins to the five-yard line as Walton will take it from there. And boy, oh boy, was he met. There is such energy with the Frogs right now as Kenny Iloka comes up with another good hit on coverage. Playing faster on offense, playing faster on defense, and playing faster in this phase as well. The junior right there, like they've done all game long defensively and even offensively, getting on top of blocks that are just playing. And this is an SEC group. This is a group that wants to be a lead in this SEC. And right now, they look a gear slower in every way than TCU. And Jalen Walton can't find much room on the inside there as Paul Dawson went in between the gap and came up with the tackle. But this is a must. You have to be patient right now. There is no way in the world you're going to put this on 14 to throw it on the perimeter with the inexperience he has now at the receiver position. They have got to be patient, and you, as the play caller, has to be patient to live with three or four yard gains. Seven and seven. He's looking for the stick throw and then just went falling ahead where Lawson wrapped him up so another third down for Ole Miss and you know what's going through Bo's head right now is this the way that I'm going to finish my career at Ole Miss is this how it's going to end we'll see what he's made of right here came in with a chance to become Ole Miss's all time winning his quarterback a chance to be a three bowl winner nobody's ever done that for the Rebels third and seven pressure sack all day long. Tevin Lawson, it continues. 0 for 6 on third downs. Ole Miss. And Land Shark right in your face. And I don't care who you are, I don't care what level it is. If you rush four and you get home, especially with the experience on the back end, you've got no chance. So Will Gleason on to punt again. And Eccles Looper is back at the 43. And he secures the fair catch just beyond the 45. And that defense is fired up and with good reason. 
earlier today both teams receiving checks from Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl representatives going to be used for a scholarship endowment all time the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl has given sixteen point three million dollars towards charity and you know they have elevated status now this is a New Year's six bowl meaning it rotates with the national semifinals of the college football playoffs. so the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl will host one of the two playoff games in twenty sixteen. TCU back on offense. Aaron Green with jump cut. And as he goes past the 50 yard line, and Brown gets him after a gain of six. And they're hosting a real beat down, beat down right now. And TCU with the ability to run it, they converted third downs on the ground. Reverse. Listen, B. As he weaves his way, a flag comes down. Remember, listen to me, threw a touchdown pass to open up this game. Personal foul, illegal cup block back toward his own goal line. Number two of the offense, 15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, second down. You usually don't get Heisman contending quarterbacks called for that, but such the case on the reverse. And he comes back into the play. Some gadget plays. It paid off with the touchdown early, but you saw the fumble. That one, a critical negative play. It's been about the only thing that slowed down the Horn Frogs. Well, it puts him in a hole of second and 19. Empty set, trips to the top for Boykin. Design quarterback run. And as Trey Elston came up to make the tackle, a gain of 10 by Boykin. Third and nine now. This has been his go to guy. Dotson, he loves in these situations. He's targeted him six times, hit him on the touchdown moments ago. Third and nine. Three high but complete to David Porter. And it's a first down for TCU. They had second and 19, two plays later, another first down. And he had to throw it high. He had a whole player right in the middle. Does a great job, right over his head. Only place you can put it. But look at the pocket. Look at the four man rush having no effect on the quarterback. And look at the composure of Trevon Boykin. And Aaron Green with another decent effort as he works his way to the 36 yard line. It may not look like much on the stat sheet, but these four yard runs on first down, five yard runs, just look at the hands on the hips of this Ole Miss defense. And they play a lot of people, but they have already been on the field an immense amount in the first half. And that complements, that run complements so much of what they like to do tempo wise. Green's in the slot near side now here on second and five. Boykin steps up against the rush and then is taken down by Sir Darius Bryant. Solid contributor to this Rebels defense that is filled with so many NFL prospects. And Bryant's been steady. Well, this is a proud and veteran defensive group that I think also feels it feels the challenges their offense is having and knows they have got to find a way to make some plays and get off the field defensively with what looks like a real pressure look from the Rebels. Third and seven. Blood zero. Man to man coverage here. And here they come off the edge. And it was batted down. And then he caught it. Boykin caught that off the deflection. It came right back to him when CJ Johnson came up. But TCU will send the punt team out. Ole Miss's defense realized it and got on top of Boykin. Look at that. And it was Johnson who ends up seeing Boykin. And coming up with the tackle as well. So Ethan Perry will get reverse rotation on this as Pack calls for the fair catch, and he does so just inside the 10 yard line. A three touchdown lead for TCU. Joe Tim Brock Shannon here at the 2014 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. His Ole Miss quarterback Bo Wallace 
Set up. Tough start, only one of seven. Body language says it all, and this was a throw that you got to make. And after two interceptions, a little gun shy for Bo Wallace, just trying to find any answer right now. And TCU has such a feel for what Ole Miss is wanting to do, and Bo's on that phone saying, can you find me some answers, please? But he also needs his receivers or his tight ends to step up and get open. They're not winning in this coverage right now. Springs to the left, chased down, taken down, Paul Dawson. And if this is the first look you're getting of Paul Dawson, wow. And that's he is not showing a blitz. everything he is. That is not a blitz. He read it, and that's in his instincts getting to the quarterback. Five of the last six linebackers for Gary Patterson have played on Sundays. A bunch of them are still starting. This kid's going to be the next in line because of those instincts. Now standing in his end zone is Wallace. And Jordan Wilkins tries to give them some breathing room. Josh Carraway with the tackle. We spent all the build up to this game over the last few weeks talking about Ole Miss defense, TCU's offense, number one scoring defense, number two scoring offense did not give this group credit. You look at some of the scores, some of the 61 points he gave up against Baylor, and you don't realize how good they had been for the majority of the year in the critical areas, and you're really seeing them play the kind of coverage on the back end with the havoc and chaos they're creating up front, making life miserable for Ole Miss. Third and 14 now, Wallace from his goal line. And he quickly gets it out to Cody Core, who's going to be knocked out and well short on Kevin White. And keep in mind, Bo Wallace is top 10 all time in SEC history in total offensive yards. And now mocking a little bit there with the land shark symbol is Davion Pearson. And you can see the frustration after that hit and the circumstances with Hugh Freeze. You love swag. As Pearson came in and knocked Cody Core's helmet off. Yeah. You talk about it all the time, Timmy. That's confidence in the swag with which they're playing. Right in the face. They're taunting that sidelines. And you can hear the fan base from Ole Miss booing and the purple in this building loving it. 21-year-old Australian Will Gleason to punt again. And Eccles Rooper already past midfield. The fifth three and out for the Ole Miss offense. Penalty comes in late here at the 41. Illegal block in the back on the receiving team. Number 82. 10 yard penalty. First down. Capital One Bowl Mania continues Thursday. Number 19 Auburn, number 18 Wisconsin. That's the Outback Bowl at noon on ESPN2. 16 Missouri, number 25 Minnesota. The Buffalo Wild Wings Citrus Bowl won at ABC. A couple teams looking to bounce back after conference championship games. Of course, Mizzou was right here against Alabama in the Georgia Dome. And Wisconsin, you know what happened to them against Ohio State. Gus Malzahn, one of the good ones to me in college football, getting his team ready. And what Gary has done here defensively is a clinic, an absolute clinic in how to take apart an opponent, make them play to their weaknesses, and just dominating this first half. Truly one of the best defensive coaches of a generation. And as Johnson is backed up by Isaac Gross. Bo Wallace. Rallying the troops on the sideline, hoping to create a spark. Boykin on second and ten. Don't let him get free. Watch out with Boykin in the open field. Crosses midfield, stayed on his feet, and dances his way for a first down. Let's go down to the field to Shannon. Well, Joe, you just saw Bo Wallace get his guys together. He said, boys, we're the SEC. Let's turn this thing around. But it's interesting. Really, that's the first sign of energy that I've seen on this Ole Miss sideline. They have been disappointed, and you could really feel it from the start of the game. They've been humbled. First down run by Aaron Green. And I'll take it a step further. You tell me anytime this year, but that land shark has been thrown right in their face all game long. Never like this. Smothering attack 
by the TCU defense and a consistent work rate by the TCU offense. Thus the margin 21 nothing in the first New Year six bowl in college football. Boykin wants more. Cody Pruitt. What an effort got, there. I think you got it right foot Incredible athleticism by Cody Pruitt. That's something that Trevon just cannot do. He cannot keep his eyes on the same side of the field the entire play. Twelfth career interception for the two time All American. As he gets that right foot down and maintains possession throughout the entire process of that interception. This ACC crew is going to take a look at it. Andy Panucci is our replay official. That is a incredible athletic effort by Pruitt to go up and then maintain his balance to stab that right foot down. Six picks a season ago, an All-American, now 12 in his career. And this this is remarkable. I mean, we're sitting right here at 21 nothing, and TCU has given up the ball three times. And I would really claim all self-inflicted. I don't think there's any doubt about this. The foot's in. Cody secures the ball all the way through the catch with contact to the ground. And the last two possession, big stops for Ole Miss. Opportunities for TCU and kind of slammed the door a little bit, but Ole Miss answered. Two big stops. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's an interception. First down, Ole Miss. So now 242 remaining in the half, and there is the authentic land shark. Sonny, Sonny Cumbie asked Tim and I yesterday about Boykin and what we saw, and just kind of his maturation and step next year to be an NFL guy, and it's plays like that. It is the attention to detail on every single play. Don't take anything for granted, no matter what the lead is. Continue to take what the defense is giving you, and he doesn't there. Is this going to be a safety? No. Wallace just reaches out. They had two at bats to get two on the board, but struck out as Wallace found a way out. And I think he's shaken up a little bit right here. He fought to get out of there with everything that he had. He's feeling it a little bit right now. Chris Bradley was the first to come after him, and then Mallet. So oh. now it's second and ten. Oh. What this TCU defense is doing time and time again is remarkable. They are attacking down after down. Tough to escape that. Was that picked off? What an effort by James McFarlane. Touchdown, TCU. Brutal mistake by Wallace. Is in. Wow. This is a nightmare for Bo Wallace. It was going to be intentional grounding, going to be a safety anyway in the end zone. Ole Miss is an absolute mess offensively. They have no answer. They're getting beat to the punch. And you said it, Joe, right before that call. They are just breathing down the neck of Wallace, his third turnover of this first half. Doesn't get any worse to play the position. The two linebackers come screaming in free right there. Nobody gets a hand on Mallet or Dawson. And McFarland finishes it off with a first half that I am telling you has the people in purple here sticking their chests out and saying, you really didn't think we were number four? After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Heck, they were number three and then beat Iowa State 55 to three. And now they are completely dismantling an SEC team that toppled Alabama. Now, granted, Laquan Treadwell, Vince Sanders, not part of this offense. But this is impressive. That's fine, Joe. But what did we talk about coming into this game? Ole Miss was motivated. Yes, they were. They wanted this game. They want to be elite. They wanted to prove that they belonged, and they loved facing this quality of an opponent. They wanted it, but they haven't handled it. But TCU is the team that is playing with the chip on their shoulder right now. Yards of 
Minnesota offense. They have one first down and three turnovers. Trey Elston on the return. Flag is down as Elston took it out to the 19. It's going to be a hold. It's going to back him up yet again. Jordan to return, holding number 32, half the distance to the goal, first down. Let's quickly check in with the guys in New Orleans and John Saunders. Well, Joe, thanks a lot. Coming up, the Buick Halftime Report. We had a very large crowd behind us right now, except Urban Meyer just appeared and started talking to the Ohio State fans, so he took most of them away. When they come back, we'll hear from Urban Meyer. We'll also hear from Nick Saban of Alabama as they get ready for the All-State Sugar Bowl. Also, the Fiesta Bowl coming up. That'll be our next of the New Year's Six. Plus, we'll hear from Kirk Herbstreit from the Rose Bowl. All coming up on the Buick Halftime Report. Joe. I look forward to it, John. Get us set for the college football playoff. The semifinals tomorrow from Pasadena. And down there with John and the guys in New Orleans. And here's Jalen Walton, and he's brought down by Paul Dawson, who has been just about everywhere today. I'll tell you what, if I'm TCU, I may seriously think about calling these timeouts. As much momentum as they have, and as much as they've got Ole Miss in the hole right now, and as aggressively as they play it, I keep an eye on that, especially based on this second down. There's a slant that is complete. And Markel Pack makes the most of it. It's a really big play for Ole Miss Four and for both him. confidence. And now Ole Miss just looking for anything here with this final minute and 10 seconds. And Wallace slides ahead. And Ole Miss crowd was looking for a flag there. And instead, they're going to see that clock come down. To yeah. under a minute left in this first half. Really tough day for that offensive line for Ole Miss as well. Getting whipped by four. Second and eight. 45 seconds remaining. Wallace is looking for anything, and what he finds is Marcus Mallett with a tackle. And a timeout is used by the Rebels. Coach Hugh Freeze and Bo Wallace talking things over and many times we've looked at some of these shots of these two discussing things in the first half and you wonder what is the answer. Well right now you're saying. I need a spark. Do I put in a guy like Devontae Kincaid the backup quarterback who ha who is incredibly fast has a really strong arm but you have Bo Wallace who has had more wins than any other quarterback in school history and he's overcome so much adversity so you want to show loyalty to him but you also you need a spark. That's a tough position to be in. Brock, they have a package for Kincaid and he got a lot of the reps before they came to Atlanta. Most of them. I think the biggest surprise in these 30 minutes is the lack of any run from Ole Miss. We, we heard about Wildcat. We heard about the big fellow the 300 pounder and as much as this game's gotten out of control at the line of scrimmage and now at 28 to nothing awfully hard to do but very little commitment to manufacturing the run that they had to find. Third down and four now. Walton's got to get to that Big edge. Big first down. And he's able to do that. So that leaves 33 seconds in this half. And that might help get Bowen a little bit of a rhythm. That's not an easy throw. He's very accurate with it on third down. Good play. So Gary Wonderlich getting ready for possibly a chance to break through and get on that scoreboard. But not with that happening. James McFarlane who had the interception for a touchdown moments ago now comes up with a sack. Remember Ole Miss only one timeout remaining. Injured player oh. here. For Ole Miss. I 
Cardinals Laramie Tunsil. One of the best. Offensive linemen in all of college football. In all America all SEC now two years in a row. Many consider him a once in a lifetime kind of player. Council was part of that. Phenomenal recruiting class a couple years ago that really sparked a lot of the success. For Ole Miss and you can see his teammates coming over and coaches coming over. You freeze mentioned. Laramie Tunsil is one of the best prosthetic specs he's ever seen. And you can tell by. What the medical staff is doing there as you saw. Typically is the pumping of an air cast. This is a very serious injury. Now. Obviously football strategy in the scoreboard is secondary to the concern for Tunsil right here. But there would be a 10 second runoff unless Ole Miss. Takes the timeout. You're talking about the best offensive lineman on this team one of the best in all the SEC. The kid has battled injuries. It was a, a knee injury a season ago that. That cut it short and it was a shoulder injury that he was just getting back to health and. And had a tremendous preparation all the conversation leading up to this game was it was so nice to get their left tackle back to form and. and just tragic in every way. You see. Army Tunsil. As they secure that brace around the right leg and really good medical facilities here at the Georgia Dome. Well equipped NFL stadium and obviously very close by will be a top notch medical center. And nice applause from the fans here as Tunsil has helped to that cart. Right in the midst of this drive before the half, Ole Miss only had 23 yards on their first nine possessions to start this game. And then advance the ball 30 yards here. And Tunsil is a big loss to that offensive line. He only allowed one sack all year, only allowed one sack all of last year as his teammates gather around him. We're going to be thinking about him, wishing him well. And it's nice to see Sam Carter and Kindred and the TCU players out there shaking hands with Tunsil as well. Tunsil carted off here. Great, Great sports talented by these players and these fans. Sure is. For a guy that's exhibited that as well, Tim. He's very talented. He's very humble. One of the very top prospects coming out of high school in really the last 10 years of college football. And folks talk about him as a once in a lifetime kind of player. 6'5, 300 pounder. He leaves here. And from a football perspective, you could see the last timeout taken to avoid the 10 second runoff. As we mentioned, that would be the case. So now a second and 14. Wallace downfield. And Quincy Adaboyjo could not come up with it. There, Kindred had coverage. Kindred had an interception earlier today. I haven't seen many of these shots, but when you can't protect, it's awfully difficult to get it down the field. Anthony Tejada and Kindred combining. They've let him play, too. They're, they're letting him play. There's no doubt about that. And I like that in the bowl game. And it's been consistent from beginning to end on both sides. You allow those guys a little bit of contact.
21 seconds remain here and a third and 14. And right over the middle is Mark Held. Got it. Now first it. down will temporarily stop the clock as they try to put Wonderlick in position. You don't want to waste precious time right here. And they do clock it there. So no timeouts remaining. 11 seconds remain in the first half. So a few more. Limited options for Bo Wallace and Hugh Freeze. It's got to go past the sticks to the boundary. Bo cannot hold the football, must avoid a sack here. Critical situation. Bo has to be careful. You cannot do that at all. Terrell Lathan with a sack of Bo Wallace and a fitting summation to the first half. As Wallace is hobbling to walk off this field. If that doesn't sum it up, what does? Another sack, another dominant effort by the TCU defense. Hugh Freeze said to us yesterday his message to the team was going to be about getting in the ring. And you're going to go up against a very physical football team that's going to want to come out and fight. And could you match them? And for 30 minutes, you simply could not. AT&T bringing us inside the headset with Coach Hugh Freeze. Let's go to the field to Shannon. Coach, you told us yesterday that when you opened the season here at the Dome, you guys had struggles. Why, where have the breakdowns happened in this first half? Man, it's hard to even you know where to start. You know, we, we've uh, turned it over, haven't uh, haven't established anything offensively. Their defense has totally dominated the game for us. Our defense is playing hard, has given up a few big plays, but we haven't given them a fair shot, you know, to, to keep us in the game offensively. And uh, we we got to get in and figure out something. It's a long game. We got to play for 60 minutes, but it's certainly a uh, uh, they, they certainly are playing like they want it worse than we do right now. What did you say to Bo after his most recent uh, turnover? Uh, I didn't say anything. Just keep playing. Just keep playing, man. Finish. Finish strong. What would make you consider making a quarterback change in the second half? I wouldn't do that to him as much as uh, much as we, he's done for this program. Uh, unless unless he's uh, beat up, you know, and, and struggling um, and can't move around, we'll try to protect him for sure. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Just 59 yards of offense for Ole Miss, 218 for TCU, 28 to zip. TCU says we can land Shark too. After the break, we're going to join John Sanders in New Orleans. We welcome you back to the 2014 Chick fil A Peach Bowl from here in Atlanta, where TCU, number six in the country, snubbed. In taking part of the college football playoff. What a statement in that first half. 28 to nothing over Ole Miss. Ole Miss had 10 possessions, three interceptions, five punts, a missed field goal, and then the end of the half. If it could go wrong, it did go wrong, and TCU was dominant. Well, so we now all, what? We all knew about TCU's offense. But so far today, it's been about their defense. Yep. Their front four has been getting to Bo Wallace. Their linebackers have been flying around. And their secondary hasn't let a receiver get open the entire day. Now what? Now what? Those veterans in that Ole Miss locker room better be sick and tired of seeing all of this in their oh. face. I mean, if you've got some pride, and, and that group's got no help, as you free said, going into halftime. Their defense has taken the ball away three times. They played with energy. But I would expect them with the pride that this program has and what they've developed defensively to come out and try to quiet some of it. Capital One pivotal performance. It is that defense holding Ole Miss to negative four rushing yards and attacking and attacking. You watch the way Paul Dawson closes right here. He avoids the guard, makes a tackle, and then you see four hats to the ball. That's how you play defense. And it was relentless. And it just never stopped rushing. It was the chaos up front. And then it was the picks and the interceptions on the back end, both safeties. And we knew these safeties would be really involved, reading the eyes of Bo Wallace. And when you can be patient on the back end and chaotic on the front end, it is really difficult. And as a player, when you play fast, you know exactly what is happening. And that is what this TCU defense is playing like. They know what's going to happen, and that's why they're able to play so fast. Nathan Noble kicking away here for Ole Miss. Oh boy. On the return. See ya. And look at him open up the second half with tremendous field position. Ranthony Tejada, the starting quarterback, the redshirt freshman. He's incredibly fast. 
This looks like the Super Bowl from last year and all the conversation about the offense and defense and the Broncos and the Seahawks and what did Percy Harvin do come out and start second half he took it all the way to the house after the big lead and Tahana does nearly the same here and what a response what do you do now how about if you're TCU you don't step off the gas pedal and you continue to show the country that you were deserving to be that final team in the playoff 65 yard kickoff return to open up the second half. This thing started going downhill and it's never stopped in TCU's favor. Aaron Green as he is wrapped up by Shackelford. Shannon, what do you have? Well, Joe, despite the lead, Coach Patterson, he kept it real when I talked to him coming out of the locker room. He said, we still have a second half to play. Running the ball will be a focus and about those turnovers. He told Trevon Boykin, hey, it's not about yards. It's all about the W. An update on left tackle Laramie Tunsil for Ole Miss. The team has told me he has a fractured fibula. He had some x-rays done here on site. So unfortunate. One of the best players in college football. Leaves this game with a broken leg. That's a good effort Great by Robert by Kamichi. Kamichi. Speaking of top recruits when they came out of high school, the All America inside player Robert Kimdichi. It's the first time we've called his name. And a big part of that is not just Gary Patterson with what he does defensively, making sure that that offense gets to the second pitch. They have been comboing and blocking and double teaming him and making sure that number five would not have his imprints on this game. Kimdichi grew up. Nearby went to Grayson High School here. Looks like they're gonna blitz zero, blitzing everybody, man to man. Third Not down and eleven for Boykin. Here's that jump ball you talk about. Wow. And who comes it. down with it? But listen, B. That's what they do time and time again. Put it up for grab. And listen, B brings it in. That's not a good decision. An interception in the second quarter, and you're throwing right into double coverage. That's Trey Elston, the safety. You've got the corner underneath, but that's all about want to. That is all about your guy going up and taking it away. And I love Trevon Boykin, the former receiver, because you know when he was a receiver, he was telling the quarterbacks, what? Well, give me a chance. Throw it up. I'll make a play. And he does just that, and listen, he delivers. That is not a great decision, but wow, listen to you went up and he made a play. He might have been down at the half yard line. The replay is looking at this. Andy Panucci and the ACC crew are taking a peek upstairs as to. If you're old, that that's everything that you want right there. You get him in a third down, you make a little adjustment, you show that pressure look and you back out of it. You've got double coverage. I'm looking to see if Close. he crossed the line there when he came down. And I think the backside's down about a half yard short of the goal line. And, and, and this isn't new. This is four or five times a game. It's exactly what Boykin does. And I think it really develops some continuity and confidence with his receivers. Your ball or nobody's ball. Even, even into double coverage here. No miss defense. Oh, by the way, with 19 picks on the year, sixth in college football, a group in the secondary that is very veteran. Elston with 30 career starts underneath his belt. And he's staring it down and he's watching. Kind of been the theme today. A lot of staring down and watching TCU make plays all over the field. I remember how Listen B opened up this game here. When they threw him the ball and then he threw it downfield as well. After the ruling on the field stands his goal and touchdown. Has this to his highlight reel to start this second half. Colby Listenby, an NCAA All America relay runner, got great speed, and he went up and fought for that ball and brought it down over Trey Elston. And TCU just continues to pour it on here in Atlanta. Said the easy thing was to complain about not being in the playoff. How about this performance? Yesterday here in Atlanta, it was announced that Alabama head coach Nick Saban is this year's recipient of the Bobby Dodd Award, Coach of the Year Award. Coach Saban, of course, is getting ready to face off against Urban Meyer. It's the college football playoff 
Back to back semifinal games Oregon and Florida State at five in the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual. And then at 830 number one Alabama and Coach Saban number four Ohio State Coach Meyer the All State Sugar Bowl four national titles for Saban two for Meyer. They're down there in New Orleans. Nobody knows getting ready for big games with Urban Meyer better than the guy sitting to my left here. What is it about him that makes him so good in those environments? It's the preparation. It's the focus on the little things. Focus on the little tiny details. Everything. We always did it. Did four different phases. The first phase, getting ourselves he healthy. The second phase, we were able to install a little bit. The third phase, we were able to start running it pretty fast tempo in the fourth phase we would call it game phase where we had everything perfectly down ready to go. Trey Elston about the two yard line. As he surges ahead past the 30. Now, here's somebody else that knows about preparation and having his team with that edge to get ready for a big game. In retrospect we felt it sitting down with him yesterday. He, he was raving about the three weeks of preparation about all the time that he had to really rep what Ole Miss likes to do and you give defensive guys like Gary the opportunity to give his group the preparation necessary you see it pay off and two days ago he told us he got his defense got one hundred and thirteen reps in practice that is a lot of reps and now the payoff has they been targeting Bo Wallace all day long broke the huddle 12 men Substitution and fraction on the offense. Five yards, first down. Come out and give up a long kickoff return. You think you get him in a, in a good look for Hugh Freeze with his defense getting out of a blitz look, throws in the double team, touchdown. And, and you're staring down this, what TCU has done in the most dominant of fashion. 1.6 average yards per play given up. 1.6. Just a swing pass to Walton, and even that can't connect. You liked what you said before half. This is going to be Bo Wallace's game. He's done too much for the program, and while maybe some will look at that and not like it from the fan base, you think there's big dividends of the pace. I think you get recruits based on that because you show, show loyalty to your players, and in turn, they're going to show loyalty to you, and they're going to play for you. And obviously, they're not playing Bumble. great today. Ball is out there. Wallace kept it. Ball is out. TCU earned it. Marcus Mallett came in and forced the fumble. If it's not Dawson, it's his buddy inside. It's the front four leaving these two linebackers free. It's the red shirt senior, the fifth year senior that's not about size or speed or playing at the next level. It's all about performance and execution at this level and now the fourth enormous takeaway for a defense that was second in the country with 36 coming in. Looks like Chucky Hunter landed on that ball with a forced fumble by Mallet. What a game by these two linebackers for Incredible. TCU. They are so active. They're everywhere the ball is. Play action for Boykin. As he gets to the edge, slings it to the end zone. Wow. And another touchdown. Josh Doxson stepped in front. Doxson with a touchdown catch. 27 yards from Boykin. My, oh, my, is TCU just smoking up. And I really don't know if that's the guy he was intending to throw the ball to. <laughs> Doxson just stepped in front. You see the double move outside. That's a little scramble drill. He sees his quarterback on the move. And that's an absolute frozen rope. Whether it's <laughs> to, to Dotson or not, that ball had enough steam to land right into the chest in number nine. Three touchdown passes. I think that's Boykin. probably what they're laughing about right now, too. When you're having a day like this, it doesn't matter. Everything works. Wallace coughed it up. TCU recovered. And then Boykin put it up. And Dotson hauled it in. Teams went to a 
orange readies for some go kart racing this week here in Atlanta. TCU showed off some speed there. They have showed off more than enough speed here. Two quick touchdowns already here in this second half. 42 zip on top of Ole Miss in the Chick fil A Peach Bowl. Overthrown. Kicking away and deep for a touchback. Fiesta Bowl will be coming your way. Number 20, Boise State. Number 10, Arizona, and the Vizio Fiesta Bowl. And the New Year's Six continues with the Capital One Orange Bowl at 8 on ESPN. Mississippi State and Georgia Tech. Of course, Mississippi State lost the Egg Bowl to this Ole Miss team. That was back on November 29th. Prior to that, it worked their way up to number one in the country. And was trying to stay in the mix for the college football playoff before the rivalry game had them going south. Jalen Walton stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Jonathan Anderson with a tackle. I know we've got 28 minutes of football still to play, but I'll tell you what headline and conversation I absolutely don't want to hear coming out of this. I don't want to hear anybody say that Ole Miss wasn't motivated to play. I don't want to hear anybody say that, oh, TCU had the bigger chip and they wanted this game more and Ole Miss really didn't want to play. That is absolutely the furthest thing from the truth. This is not about want to. This is about complete execution and domination from TCU. Like that. As once again, James McFarland gets himself involved. Remember, he had the interception in the end zone for a touchdown. I also think Gary Patterson deserves a lot of credit right now. He got this team ready to play. They had a great game plan coming in. They knew what Ole Miss was going to try to do, and they were executing. Third and nine. And that's incomplete. In this. He was looking for Cody Core. And you got backups in now. You got a couple backups for TCU. You saw Denzel Johnson on the previous snap. Some new pieces coming into that back seven. It doesn't matter. Very little separation. And this, and, and you know, playing the position, this will be all about bad Bo Wallace. It'll be all about his turnovers. But he's got no separation. He's had, had very little help with his offensive line protection. And that play, once again, pretty indicative of TCU being on top of all these routes. Well, Gleason. Rugby punts left footed can do it left footed or right footed here. There's Jay Ajayi. He had 25 rushing touchdowns this year for Boise State. They'll be coming up against Arizona in the Vizio Fiesta Bowl. Well, Arizona really needs to bounce back after the way they looked to finish up the season. 51 to 13 loss against. Oregon in the Pac-12 championship. Of course, they did have good wins prior to that. Beat Utah, beat Arizona State. Scored a lot of points. Should be an interesting one. This Vizio Fiesta Bowl coming up at four as the New Year's Six continues. Green can't find much that time. I would expect to see Tim the tempo slow down just a little bit. Not quite the breakneck speed we saw early as they really got Ole Miss on their heels. In the time Green is thrown down. And they're probably going to be a little Thompson. bit more content just being able to pound this ball, solid punts, back them up. You really got to believe going into next year this TCU team having 10 restart returning starters on offense. They're going to be in the top four or five rankings. And this number two Trevon Boykin. Have a shot at that out the Heisman. Here goes Boykin on third and ten and he slides short of that line to make. Tell you what we have seen today is you've seen a little bit of that flare. You've seen the money sign, you've seen the number. And the guy that played in this game a year ago by the name of Manzel. It's the first time I've invoked the name, but at 42 to nothing, I feel pretty confident in what TCU has done here. He has some some Manzel to his game, doesn't he? Where's the number? But just some of the risk, some of the 
playmaking, some of the giving my guys around me opportunities to be better. And they pin that inside the five yard line. TCU having it every which way on Ole Miss. We welcome you back to the 2014 Chick fil A Peach Bowl. As aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear, Terriers for superior performance that carry you to your destination. Goodyear. More driven. TCU was unranked when the season began. Selection committee put them down at number six and kept them out of the playoff. ESPN's football power index had them at number five and Ole Miss at number four. Doesn't look so pretty now, does it? Jalen Walton on the direct snap. And that doesn't matter either, as he was ripped down by Chucky Hunter. <laughs> These guys up front are making a case. You see this quick swim move there. No change for Robert Conyers back in the game. Got nicked up earlier. And they're just winning. When four can whip your five, the defense comes pretty easy. And that chip is still there. That chip on their shoulder, they're still playing with it. One of five seniors, Chucky Hunter on this defense. Mathers tries to wrestle free. Likely a face mask call here as Dawson came swinging in after him. Personal foul, face mask, number 47 defense, 15 yards, first down. Once again, you got two guys right at the line of scrimmage. You can see Mallet in there taking out the offensive lineman, giving his buddy next to him a chance. And that's what this group does really, really well. When you want to talk about elite defense and schematically what do they do, not only is it the route recognition on the back end, it is those front guys when they stunt and when they move, they know exactly how to help the buddy next to them, free them up to allow them to make some plays. Another direct snap. And this as well only goes for limited yardage with Itavius Mathers. Dawson Dawson as good as any linebacker you saw on tape this year. He is. I think he's one of the best linebackers in the country. I don't know. I feel like there's a few linebackers who might have bring a little bit more pop than he does. But he is so athletic in his instincts being able to avoid blocks and shoot the gap and make tackles in the backfield. I think he's one of the best in the country. Remember he had that pick six against Oklahoma off Trevor Knight that turned that game around. He's had so many big moments this year. Bo Wallace escapes the rush there, goes downfield, and is able to find Cody Core. 20 yard reception to Cody Core, who had a big game here at the Georgia Dome to start the year. Had 110 yards and a couple touchdowns against Boise State. Swing it out to Pack. And it goes to the 49 yard line. Keep it with Mathers, and he gets driven back that time. That offensive line is just getting whooped right now by Ole Miss. When those linebackers, when 47 and 54 <laughs> are sitting on the other side of the line of scrimmage, it's reflective of not only them knowing what's coming, that these big boys that are trying to pull and trying to move and trying to combo block to them are just more than a step slow. Third and five for Bo Wallace and the Rebels. And that is caught by Attaboy Joe. So a first down for Ole Miss. And Bo's hurting a little bit. Remember that sack just before halftime. That right ankle. Here comes Devontae Kincaid. He thought we would see him. They did have a package in for him, and he got a lot of reps in practice before they came to Atlanta. And this is the kid that they really like. He's got the strongest arm on the team. He is very athletic. He might be able to provide a spark. 
six foot 200 pound redshirt freshman Devonte Kincaid. And he completes his first pass to Mathers. And I think when Hugh sits back and evaluates this game, this is going to be one of the conversations that any play caller has when they get shut out and beat down the way that, that, that Ole Miss did here for two and a half quarters, and that is what could I have done differently? And I think you needed to mix it up a little bit more. I think you had to see some more. We thought that they would manufacture a little bit more of their plays and bring in a Kincaid and see a Liggins, and you just didn't really see any of this in the first half. And here's Mathers. As his helmet came off there, and as he gets the necessary yardage for the first down, it's tackled by Kindred. So he will run off the field. Kindred had an interception in the first half today. Part of that active defensive backfield that has shut down Bo Wallace and the Rebels' passing attack. Devontae Kincaid gets his chance now against TCU. Another first down. And he's going to run it, but that got clogged up quickly. Paul Dawson and Pearson and the rest of that TCU front finding Kincaid. Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year, Big 12 Coach of the Year. So good at every single level. And Gary so prepared for this game today. Well, Wallace trots back out on the field for Ole Miss. Second and 11. And over the middle to Evan Ingram, and they just haven't seen enough of that today. Very good catch. Well, you've seen all three completions the comeback on the scramble, the curl route that was an adjustment, and here you're trying to run that quick screen and sneak Ingram down the middle. Even that is a collision completion. It was Ingram's first reception, a guy who was first team all SEC, 37 receptions. And without Laquan Treadwell and Vince Sanders, the starting receivers, the thought was that Ingram would play a major factor in the passing game. And what did TCU do? Combo coverage him as much as they possibly can, no matter where he was on the field. You were going to have a couple defenders on him, lots of eyes on him as you see Vince Sanders with the torn ACL look on. Second and goal now. Well, inside screen, Cody Core, but he can't find much. And Sam Carter made the tackle. And that's where you miss a Laramie Tunzel's athleticism where he possibly could have got out in front and made that block. The all SEC and all America left tackle. You made broken leg earlier in this game. You made this point early. Look at the corner still on top of Ingram to the top of the field. That's their best corner. Look for them to try to go one on one with Ingram at the top of your screen. Third and goal. Wallace was running out of options as everything was well covered there and Pearson was coming after him. He looked that way but TCU was ready. Safety cheated over towards Ingram. And the story of this game and when you look at this defense that Hugh Freeze had to match wits with. They're so good situationally so good on third down and taking the ball away and even in this area of the field number six in the country at limiting touchdowns and a Fourth down away from doing it once again. He pitches it back. But no matter what was going to happen there, it was going the wrong way. There have been a few moments like that where you really feel like certain plays sum up the day, and this is one of them. But Wallace was looking to the right that time. He's been still snapped it. Guys, that was a 15 play drive that started on their own three yard line. And they still got a zero on the scoreboard.
Boykin downfield and nearly intercepted as he threw it too far to the inside and Golson was trying to track it down. Mallet and Dawson dynamic combination of backers for TCU. You know, Wallace has not felt a matchup zone in guys that cover so well truly really trust one another. Good effort on the inside that time by David Porter. And that's Trevon really understanding the coverage and what the defense is trying to do. He gave him a little pump, pump fake. The linebacker hesitated and he wrapped into the next open window behind him. for about three yards there. In terms of the history of bowl games for Ole Miss, 32 point margin was the worst loss that they had. Came in the 91 Gator Bowl against Michigan. Boykins going downfield again. Through Listen B. <laughs> I know you enjoy some of that I just don't care attitude. <laughs> and I think you get away with it because of his overall athleticism and everything he brings. But it really is sitting up here remarkable the number of times that he will just say the heck with it. I'm going to throw in the coverage and I don't really care. I I'm going to trust my people around me. That time he threw to the outside of Emmanuel Porter. And there is a flag down. Illegal substitution on the defense. The 12th player did not get off the field. That's a five yard penalty. Replay third down. And that attitude that, that gunslinger attitude is so reflective of this guy right here. Sonny Cumbie up in the booth and Doug Meacham out on the field that combination that Gary Patterson brought in this offseason to energize and I think as much as anything just change the confidence of that group offensively. These are a lot of the same pieces that were four and eight a year ago and couldn't do anything offensively and that mindset that identity so critical. No question. And you never want to take away that that swagger that a team plays with or the confidence that a quarterback and his receivers play with. So I mean you want him to be smart but you also want him to be aggressive. And that's a fine line of coaching. You know that's an interesting point you bring up Brock when you talk about it's basically the same players as a year ago. This is the most improved offense in the country. What a difference the philosophy the scheme the coaching and the buy in and execution by these players has made. Yeah, it's amazing what a little success can do. Slings it again that time to Gray. That's where you really see Trevon's arm strength. He's falling away. He's throwing to his non-dominant side and he puts it right on the receiver's face. It's a big time throw. Look at the upgrade from 2013 to 2014 how much they improved. Most improved offense in the country. Quickly gets it to the outside to Jawan Story. And Tim and I were talking quite a bit coming into this game, and and obviously you love to see all the fundamentals, right? All the work that he's going to go, Trevon will work on this offseason. Everything that Bo did last offseason to maybe refine the skills. But Tim, I think you made an excellent point when you said, yeah, but part of this is also not putting too much on Boykin. Allow him to play to his strengths without trying to put him in a box. When you have someone that is special, you have to, you have to, you want to coach them and you want to mold them, but you also, also, you can't take away what they do that is so special. And his ability to make plays and throw the ball sidearm and scramble away from people, you never want to coach that out of him because that's what makes this guy great, and that's what's made this offense great this year. Plus, they got a few freaks at receivers that go up and catch. They sure the ball. do. They have plenty of them, and that guy Doug Meacham. Loves those jump ball plays. What do they say? Hey, if we go one for three on those jump, we're balls, happy. <laughs> we're happy with that, and that has paid off this year. 
third and one. Speed option to the near side. Great block. And Boykin will pick up that one yard and then was pushed out. There is a flag down. Chief Brown was the one to get to Boykin. Holding offense number 74. 10 yard penalty, third down. That's Big V. Halapalu Vaitai, the right tackle. He was a second team all Big 12 player. They got some big bookend tackles with Vitae and Fabulage on this offensive line. Fabulage's 6'7, 360. Opposite Vitae's 6'6, 308. So third and 11 after the penalty. Look at the time Boykin has. And finally chased down from behind by Isaac Gross. Talk about a kid that plays with the motors, Isaac Gross. He's one of the hardest players, hardest playing players in the SEC, in my opinion. Relentless. Ethan Perry, junior punter for TCU. False start on the offense, the left guard, five yard penalty. Patterson still coaching him up. Yeah, I have a hunch he's thinking about this. I do too, Brock. Boy, would that shutout be quite a statement. Well, this is already a statement. You're talking about the number one scoring defense. We cannot lose sight of that. Well, we talked coming into this game, an Ole Miss crew that was giving up 13.8 points per game, number one in all of college football. Speaking of those uh, considered some of the best out there, you'll see one of them in the Vizio Fiesta Bowl. And Scooby Wright, the linebacker for Arizona, taking on Boise State. That is still to come as the New Year's Six continues. Forget the apple and the big ball in Times Square. They drop the peach down here in Atlanta for New Year's Eve as we wish everybody a happy new year. Of course, everybody will be watching that Capital One Orange Bowl tonight. Tim, you and I will be heading off to New Orleans to get ready for SEC Nations coverage of the All-State Sugar Bowl. Brock, you're off to San Antonio, going to get set for UCLA and K-State. I thought this was going to be a good game. I thought this was going to be a competitive game. I think Friday night in San Antonio will be. This is pretty shocking to me, and I kind of hope this is Bo Wallace's final series as well. Wallace does start this fourth quarter and goes downfield and throws it short of Cody Core. Should Bo Wallace be in the game, Tim? That's they put really, David Kincaid really good, in for a, a, a really, series. Yeah, they put Devontae in for Devontae a series. Kincaid, excuse me. But you know, I mean, you want to show loyalty to this kid, but when is enough enough? You want to also get him out of there when he has an opportunity to still be healthy at in this game, too. He's taking a beating. Well, yeah, he he was injured before the half with that right ankle you saw him limping. Devontae Kincaid came into the game, had a little bit of success, moved the team for a few first downs, and then Wallace returned. There is Kincaid, the redshirt freshman, who got a lot of reps prior to practice here in Atlanta. More mobile of the two backup quarterbacks, has a very strong arm, and is just a redshirt freshman. Aren't you beyond loyalty? I, I absolutely understand your point coming out in the second half and giving him an opportunity to continue to fight. And this isn't an indictment on Bo Wallace. Oh, no. This is about this game is decided. He has taken an absolute beating. We cannot do anything. And let's just give a young kid another opportunity. Wallace gutsy in trying to extend this play, but really tough for him to get to that edge uh, against Jonathan Anderson. I 
I mean, some of this is also, I have to believe, Tim, a Hugh Freeze not wanting Bo to go out on this note. And just trying to find a way to score points. But you know what? You had a 15 play drive where you get down there, the center snaps it early. I mean, as I said, ultimately, I, I love loyalty and in, in respect and everything else, and you want the best for your guys. But this game's decided. As Gleason punts away. Take a short break and come back to Atlanta in the new year six. TCU has been sitting outside the circle for many years. We've heard eye test and we've heard how these teams look and how we evaluate them. Everybody's going to have an argument. Uh, you know, whoever's left out is going to argue we belong in there. These are really smart people, but they had an impossible task. Three teams vying for that one spot. TCU's probably sitting there and saying, hey, we were three, we won. What's going to happen? Somebody's going to get screwed. How do you drop TCU that was number three? There's it, such a thin line. Line's not so thin on this scoreboard. Mighty thick. The margin here of TCU and their performance against number nine Ole Miss. As Lissenby gets the completion. So you heard the debate framed as TCU was number three. They beat Iowa State 55 to three to close out the season. Named co-champs of the Big 12 and Ohio State gets in. TCU Baylor from the Big 12 left out of the college football playoff and then they put on this performance here against Ole Miss a team that is without their starting receivers but a team that had some of the best wins in college football this year and a top notch number one ranked scoring defense and they're not taking the foot off the pedal right now they're going no huddle and they're getting to the line of scrimmage and they're taking still taking shots and Ole Miss who beat number four Mississippi State without Laquan Treadwell and Vince Sanders getting injured in that game and still beat them. This is I, I had not seen this coming and of course had the signature win against Alabama as Jermon Boykin is coming out of the game. Graham Kohlhausen goes in Boykin leaves with three touchdown passes on the day 65 yards rushing as well Aaron Green adds to his total. This changes the conversation. I mean this is. This changes the conversation not just over the next week or two in my opinion this changes the conversation going into next year and you're talking about a top three program you return 10 people offensively including this guy that's going to be in everybody's conversation about preseason Heisman you return almost everybody on the on this offensive group that got better and better as the season evolved and played their best against the number one defense in college football Hicks with the carry and Shannon you know the story about Trevon Boykin and the quarterback competition coming into this year. There was no guarantee for Boykin, and here he is blossomed into a Heisman contender this year, finished fourth in this masterful performance, Shannon. He told me that if you would have told him at the beginning of the season if the Heisman would have been on his list of goals and he just shook his head and he would have said are you serious if, if you've told him he was going to finish fourth but you know he remained focused and I asked him if he ever thought about transferring out of TCU when he didn't know if he would have this starting quarterback position no way is what he told me it's all about the relationships with these guys a lot of these guys he was recruited with and I also spoke with his mom and he said he never showed his disappointment he just held his ground and knew he would get his chance. Jaden Oberchrome has made 13 straight field goals, had the game winning field goal to beat West Virginia on for this 41 yard attempt. And that target line was off to the right. So it stays 42 to nothing, TCU. The start of the New Year Six Bulls. It's blowout fashion for TCU. Will Jay Ajay play a big role for Boise State in the Vizio Fiesta Bowl? That answer is coming up at 4 o'clock on ESPN. TCU is closing in on their 12th win of the season. That'll be more than the total number of wins that the Horned Frogs had in their previous two seasons. Paul Wallace out. Devontae Kincaid in. And he escapes the pressure, throws it downfield and incomplete as Quincy Adaboyjo was streaking down the field. We set forth the impact players 
earlier today. Evan Ingram only one catch. He had to do more than that. He really did. Losing two of their biggest playmakers, he had to step up and make plays, but give TCU a lot of credit. They doubled him, and they communicated, and they passed things off, and he wasn't open the entire day. Kincaid able to get loose for about three yards that time. Shannon. Well, Joe, Laquan Treadwell, obviously one of the keys to this Ole Miss offense early in this season, having suffered that injury that just broke the hearts of all college football fans across the nation. I spoke with him earlier today. He told me good news for the Ole Miss fans. He is on schedule for a spring return. He feels like rehab is going very well. He's already started some weight bearing exercises, but he did tell me he will be more. He will be mentally stronger when he does come back and plays with his team. He feels like this entire experience has taught him that. And when he reflects on that moment, the injury, he says he realizes there's a big picture. Football will always be here. It's more about life. And Kate pushed out, and to Shannon's point, it was a heartbreaking injury crossing the goal line for a potential game winning touchdown against Auburn. Broken fibula, dislocated ankle, underwent surgery. So hopeful for the new year is Laquan Treadwell. And Laramie Tunsil earlier today with the fractured fibula. No doubt he is going to be spending their left tackle, going to be spending a lot of the offseason, like Laquan, trying to get himself back and healthy. And Tim, they're going to have to sit on this for a number of months. And the disappointing thing for Ole Miss is that is the heart of their offense. Laquan Treadwell and Laramie Tunsil, those are the leaders. Those are the guys that rally him in the weight room, on the practice field, in warm ups. Those are the guys that are the leaders, and they really need them to be out there on the field leading that offense. New Year's six will continue with the Vizio Fiesta Bowl. Rich Rodriguez led Arizona to 10 wins this year, taking on Boise State coming up on ESPN at 4 Eastern. Hey, the NFL playoffs are going to start on ESPN. You got the Cardinals and the Panthers, the NFL playoff wild card round, Saturday, 420 on ESPN. You got an 11 win Arizona team. On the road against the NFC South winner with a 7 8 and 1 record. Yeah, but that 7 8 and 1's won four in a row, and mm -hmm. they play like TCU. And they're playing really good defense right now. Both those teams are playing great defense. One with a four man rush and being very effective, and the other team beat up a little bit like Ole Miss is here today. And look who's back for a moment as Boykin hands off to Green. Basically, see all the starters, and you've continued to see that both offensively and defensively. And while I liked Wallace getting the opportunity to get off the field and watch the final 10 minutes here, this is also reflective in Gary's attitude, both offensively and defensively. You know, the coach Patterson wants to see that shutout on the defensive end, and I'm sure Sonny and Sonny Cumbie and Doug Meacham are in his ear saying, Let my guys finish it out and close it out. You know, I loved what he said, and I brought it up earlier today about not making the college football playoff when they were number three and then won by 52 points. And he said the easy way out would be to complain. The Gary Patterson way was to say listen we're going to play a good football team in a major bowl game New Year's Six bowl game and this is what we're going to do. And how much of a louder statement has this made. Picked off. As Sinquez Golson. Spins free at the 25. Inside the 20. And down to about the 11 yard line where it came loose right at the end. Is this a fumble or are they saying it is Ole Miss ball here? Looked like Eccles Looper fell on that ball at the end. Well, let's see what the officials say. Jerry Magalanis and the crew gathered for a moment. The ruling on the field, the runner was down. First down, Ole Miss. So they're saying Golson's return to the 11 yard line stands there. You be the judge. Does Eccles Looper strip this ball? That is coming loose. 
Watch this. That ball is coming loose. Does he gather it again or is it still loose? And then Looper just rolls with it and gets possession. I would believe if they review this, it'll be TCU ball. For now, it's first down Ole Miss. Wildcat for Ole Miss. Jordan Wilkins, direct snap. He's able to get a little bit of that edge around the corner, and Marcus Mallett finally pushes him out. I think the point you made there, Joe, is initially that ball was moving very clearly, but yes. it almost looked like Olsen then secured it before he hit the ground again. Obviously, what the replay booth believes. Very, very close. At it. Jordan Wilkins remains. In the Wildcat position here on second down. And they will have attract that well with Pearson wrapping up his leg. Where these big guys up front have had an impossible time targeting TCU's front seven. The overall speed and quickness and athleticism. And look at that. You got the starter still in there. Dawson comes back in, not just Gary Patterson and his guys. They're absolutely playing for this shutout right now. Yeah, the people in purple here that have all remained to make a statement to college football. They want that shutout as badly as the guys on the field. Devontae Kincaid at quarterback on third and four. Flag is down as Kincaid runs ahead, and they're going to whistle this. Should be a delay, and that's what it is. Delay a game on the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. Hugh Free says, look at the play clock. He's pointing out where it is. This is going to have to go to the perimeter. They are going to double team and have an enormous emphasis on Evan Ingram. As we talked about really schematically with what TCU and what they like to do is you're going to beat us with your second pitch. The one on ones are to the perimeter. Third and nine almost jumped at that time. Boy, did Paul Dawson break on that throw. He read it beautifully. He was probably out in front of it too far. He was. You cannot tell me this kid is not coached up. Wow. The Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, Walter Camp, first team All America, and a dominating performance here. And now Ole Miss just wants to erase that zero. They do not want to be shut out. Now they passed up an opportunity to do this with Wonderlick earlier, but now they want points on the board here, the 27 yard attempt. Patterson's defense will not have the shutout. Forty two to three. Hopefully there'll be closer action coming up at University of Phoenix Stadium. The Vizio Fiesta Bowl. Grant Hedrick the quarterback for Boise getting ready for Arizona. There's TCU's first locally grown All-American Johnny Vaught who of course is better known for being one of the iconic legends of Ole Miss football. A great head coach. College football Hall of Famer. Who played at one school, TCU, one on the coach, so successfully at the other. A connection between these two. A little squib kick right down the middle is fielded at about the 23. And so much of this story tonight has been about the two time AP coach of the year Gary Robinson or Gary Patterson and what he's done with his defensive crew. Look at him keeping Paul Dawson clean. There's no question. Defense line did a great job, but Paul Dawson's instinct shooting a gap, forcing Bo Wallace to make a terrible decision. When we have said their route adjustment and their ability to pass off and play three on two and some of the matchup zone, and look where Bo has There's nowhere to go. Has to go nowhere. And, and to be quite honest with you, he felt a lot of that yesterday with all of the work with all of the reps with all of the time that this bowl preparation has given him and his defensive staff 
And they were ready for the Rebels today. Jordan Moore with a reception from Graham Kohlhausen, a walk-on. He's played some mop-up duty this year. He played at Houston to start his career. He played there in 2012 in a few games. He transferred to a junior college and then came to TCU. But obviously, Trey Boykin, in the year he's had, we haven't seen much of Kohlhausen. Just a little mop-up duty for the walk-on. 42-3, to gets himself into the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. You think Bram anticipated being in this position <laughs> today? Going up against the Land Shark defense. And once again, he quickly gets it to Jordan Moore. Moore's another one of these track All-Americans on TCU, and he has looked to find a position that fits him. Was a defensive back, then a linebacker. He's 6'3, 221. Played a little running back and now wide receiver. One thing we've seen today, and you guys so familiar being in the SAC and the SEC nation all year, is the caliber of athlete. We hear that all the time, right? Well, the size and the speed, and you just look at the overall athleticism of the best conference in college football. And you have really seen, to me, TCU neutralize so much of that and almost be the better, faster team this afternoon. There's no question about that. I've been very impressed scouting TCU that this entire season, especially the last few weeks, Brock, we've been breaking them down, and today being able to see them on the field, see how fast they've played. They play fast because they are coached well, they know what they're doing, and they're confident in their scheme and their game plan. And they also have great athletes. You look at their receivers, 6'3", 6'4", 205, 210, 215. Big time athletes with a lot of speed. And they're nine deep, and eight of them return. And they add four more in a recruiting class that, as Gary said yesterday, they're just their third year into the Big 12. And Gary Patterson has a recruiting philosophy that has worked well for him. He wants speed athletes who have touched the ball in their career, and then he will find a place for you. Desmond White with the reception in the first down. You will never see a program that takes more running backs, receivers, high school option quarterbacks, and figures out how they can contribute on the field somewhere. He takes the best athlete and then finds a position for him. Well, that little guy that just caught the pass, completely indicative of that. Desmond White at 5'7", 150 pounds, was the 6A player of the year in the state of Texas as a quarterback. And he's going to come here, and you know what he's going to be. He's going to be a dynamic little slot receiver and running back and H-back. And, and he's a Wildcat box. quarterback. And he played at DeSoto High, powerhouse school. And had no chance at all. And keep in mind, Patterson, when they were in the Mountain West, made the transition to the Big 12. He knew that there had to be there had to be some upgrades along the way. Look at how quickly he's gotten to that point where the overall athlete is of that caliber. Yes, and he made the decision, and this wasn't a one-year decision. He said he'd been sitting on systematically what they were mm -hmm. going to do offensively, because after three years in the Big 12, he knew up front to really protect his guys up front and to even level that playing field when you get up against these elite caliber defenses. To play with this timing, this tempo, and in this system really allows those perimeter players to flourish. Dolores Johnson with the carry. Give Patterson credit, brings in Sonny Cumby. Doug Meacham goes in a different way and takes a little bit of the best of both worlds. You go no huddle, you go hurry up, you go spread, you get elements of the Mike Leach passing game, but yet the spread option attack. Lots of unique run game, and I, I really love what you said earlier, Joe. It stood out to you, it stood out to all of us when Gary very frankly said, hey, at TCU, we weren't going to gripe. We weren't going to complain. We were going to let our actions on the field and, and the opportunity they had against the number nine team in America to speak volumes reminds me, Tim, of those coaches that you and I have had through the years that are screamers and yellers. And that eventually some of that falls a little quiet and the loudest statement that you can make is not through your word, but through your action. And that's what they've done today. And they're absolutely making a big statement against a very good team in Ole Miss. And a statement that's going to carry through to tomorrow night when there will be probably many watching the All-State Sugar Bowl and sizing up Ohio State. Now listen, Ohio State is playing good at football down the stretch of the season as every as anybody is. Did he just hit by Yes, he did. <laughs> you gotta love it. But you'll have a lot of folks. Yes, you will. Talking about this, it might TCU. get wet pretty soon. Well, they're filling up that bucket. A lot of folks will be sizing up Ohio State, framing them with TCU based on this performance here today. 
Kyle Hicks getting more extended work here in these final couple minutes. Coach Patterson. He won more Coach of the Year awards this year and did this moments ago. 14th year at TCU and still as fiery and competitive as he's ever been. The all time winningest coach for the Horn Frogs. The visor kind of softened the blow a little bit. <laughs> a little reinforced visor. A good day for the Big 12. Let's not lose sight of that. 0 and 3 Monday night. Oklahoma getting beat down Texas with a very difficult night and for the Big 12 conference they have the opportunity to stick their chest out a little bit today and say against one of the SEC superpowers this season he came in and went toe to toe and absolutely got the best of them coasting in towards that largest margin of victory in the history of the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Boykin wanted to get that bucket into his hands. And you're going to hear a lot of hype of Trevon Boykin and this TCU team all offseason. And you know what you're going to hear from Hugh Freeze in his comments after the game, much like he was at halftime, a class act. Has the utmost respect for Gary in this program. And you're going to, I think, hear him be very honest, lay it out there. That they just got whipped in every single way this afternoon. And I think these are two of the classiest coaches in college football, and they represent this game in a great way. Oh, and look at he's trying to dodge that Gatorade. He didn't dodge it. <laughs> he was trying. And though. he doesn't he mind it. It would have been too. easier to complain and sit back and rail against those who left them out. Instead, they came into the New Year six and they dominated. TCU. The Chick fil A Peach Bowl champs. Led by a defense that held Ole Miss to nine yards rushing. They forced four turnovers and only allowed three of 15 third down conversions. And it's Bo Wallace, it just went south right from the start. It's really exciting to think about what this TCU offense could look like next year. Ten returning starters, Trevon Boykin, who has uh, so much playmaking ability. Has a has a real shot of winning the Heisman next year in this offense with these coaches. If both of these offensive coordinators come back, they say they will, but they're hot commodities right now. Let's go down to the field to Shannon. Well, we're just talking about the Gatorade bath Coach Patterson received. You said you missed the first one, but they got you the second time. I fooled them the first one, and they they, they came back with a counter. Coach, this entire process being left out of the playoff, you have taken the high road. You've been positive. But what statement does this send the country? Well, yeah, I don't think I have to say anything. I think for next year and what happened this year, I think everybody can see what kind of football team. Ole Miss is a good football team. You know, we came out, we won to play. Usually it comes down to the team that wants it the most. We played hard. Our kids practiced all December like they wanted to be here. So it's, you know, I really like Coach Freeze. He's a really good football coach. And they got a good team. So. You mentioned next season. Trevon Boykin told me that their goal, your goal, is to win a national championship. How does this game set you guys up for next season moving forward? Well, our goal every year is to do it, but I haven't said that. <laughs> you know, my thing is to become the best football team we can be. And so for us, what we're going to try to do is we're going to get back, start the second week of January, start all over, and get ready to go. I'm going to let you talk a little bit about your defense. All the talk this season has been about your offense, but what do you think about the way they performed tonight? Well, you know, they hurt for a whole month. All about Ole Miss. And we've been playing defense around here for a long time. So, uh, you know, these guys had a mission. They wanted to play well today, and I think they did. I think they did. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks. Ole Miss only had 129 yards of total offense. That TCU defense was awesome. Yep, Gary, you didn't really need to say anything. The score says it all. 42 to 3. Next up is the Vizio Fiesta Bowl, Boise State and Arizona.
For Shannon Spake, Tim Tebow, Tebow, Brock Hewart, I'm Joe Tessitore. Have a great rest of your day and enjoy the rest of the New Year Six. Joe Tessator, Tim Tebow, Brock Hewitt, Shannon Spake with you here on ESPN 3 as the first of the New Year's Six Bowl games wraps up. TCU with a 42 to 3 win over Ole Miss. Defense was just awesome. Offense as expected for TCU, 423 yards of total offense. And the trophy ceremony here at the Georgia Dome. As Gary Patterson, 14 years on the job. 132 wins now. The all time winningest coach at TCU. What a great job in preparing his team to play. I mean, and it started from the first possession when Chris Hackett, he knew the follow out was coming by Ole Miss. He jumped it, he got the interception. And from that point on, they knew what Ole Miss was bringing to the table and they were ready. And then the aggressiveness offensively. They knew they had to play fast. They wanted to get Ole Miss on their heels. The double pass on the second play. They script their first 15 plays. They knew all December what was coming, and they found themselves after the takeaway in prime position at the 35 yard line to take that shot, to hit it, and really have Ole Miss backpedaling from that point on. Can we give Paul Dawson some credit? He played a heck of a game. Wow. Linebacker for TCU, Big 12's defensive. Player of the year. It just seemed like he was everywhere, shooting the gap around the ball. Didn't matter if he was in the backfield or if he was in coverage. What's really interesting is Dave Womack, the defense coordinator for Ole Miss, said to us repeatedly how much he liked the matchup, that he really felt like his Rebels matched up well with TCU's O line. Their tempo, their pace neutralized a lot of that. On the flip side, Gary Patterson's front dominated. I mean, absolutely in the run game, in, in protections, they took apart so that they never had to bring a safety in the box. They never had to play extra numbers to stop the run they could play all the coverage they wanted to and completely I mean really destroyed Ole Miss offense today that guy right there number 40 James McFarland had an interception in the end zone for a touchdown everybody got involved even 10 different receivers on offense for TCU coming up with catches and boy did they have some playmakers listen B Dotson those guys go up and they make plays Shannon Spake has the trophy ceremony well, thank you guys very much. On behalf of Chick-fil-A Bowl and the college football playoff, congratulations to both of the teams, obviously. Uh, we are grateful for Chick-fil-A to support college football and to present the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl's George P. Crumbly Championship Trophy. Here is their chairman, Steve Riddell. I wanted to congratulate both teams for a great effort today. Uh, and on behalf of the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, its volunteers and staff, as well as our title sponsor, Chick-fil-A, and the college football playoff group, it's my great honor and privilege to present the Chick-fil-A Bowl trophy to Coach Patterson. And the TCU Horn Frogs, what an incredible effort. Congratulations. Gonna have to take the picture, the picture opportunity. You know, everyone over there wants to see you hold that trophy high, Coach.
Before we get into the questions, I want you to look over there, see all these fans that have made the trip here to Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. What do you have to say to them? I'm going to tell them the same thing that I told them when we won the conference championship. I love you. So when you look at the season, the playoff being being left out of that playoff, you have taken the high road, you've been positive about it, but what statement does this make, Coach? You know, the same thing that I've been doing. I think our team spoke for itself tonight. I don't think we need to do anything. Just understand that TC's climbing the mountain. We're not where we want to be, but we're sure climbing and uh, we got a great football team coming back next year. They start over again and do like they did, then people will pay attention maybe a little bit closer next year. I'm going to let you give a little love to your players. <laughs> when you look at a performance like this this evening, what, what goes through your mind as a head coach? Well, you know, TC has been doing this for a long time. It's not our first year that we've won big ball games. Uh, we put us in an event, our people come, and I'm very proud of them because the last three years they've been through quite a journey. And uh, to get a chance to be a part of all this, get a chance to play a really good Ole Miss football team, and understand that on a special day starting the right before the new year, that uh, great things could happen for us. And I'm just, I'm glad for everybody at TCU because it's a special group, it's a special town, and we do it. They love you. I gotta ask you about next year, looking ahead. We're gonna let you celebrate this one for a while, but let's look ahead to 2015. What is this team capable of, and, and what do you think that this says about where you guys should be when those standings come out at the beginning of the year? Well, you told me that Trayvon said that I said national championship. <laughs> really, to be honest with you, it's all about, it's all about being the best team we can be. And uh, I thought this would be a, a uh, great springboard game if we could play well. And I think we, we showed the nation that TCU is here to stay. We came in to play. Congratulations, Coach. We'll let you take that trophy over to your guys. And now... Never going to be able to talk over fireworks. So now for our player awards, here is the CEO of Chick-fil-A, Don Cathy. Yep, we'll, we'll go with offensive player, Don Cathy. Yes, well congratulations, and uh, we're excited to present this trophy tonight, and what an exciting event it's been for the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Congratulations. Thank you, thank We're happy you, for you. God bless you. you. Quarterback Trevon Boykin. I don't think there was any question about that. And defensive players, defensive and James McFarland. We'll start with Trevon. When you look at this win, what, what's the most meaningful part of it for you? Um, we, we really just looked at it and we tried to get the seniors the best possible season they could have. And, and this is the last time this group will ever be together and play together. So we really wanted to go out with a bang. And, and today we showed the nation what we can really do. There are a lot of guys coming back next season, though. A lot of guys that have been your brothers for many years, guys that kept you at TCU even during the quarterback battle. What is it like to be a part of a team like this? Um, to, to have a family like this, I mean, it, it, words can't really explain. I mean, we've been through everything, from the lows, the highs, and, and to have this win and, and be one of the top teams that we could be, I mean, it's just a blessing. What's it like for you guys on offense when you come sit on the bench? And sit back and watch your defense do what they did tonight. Man, it, it, it was crazy. We came out firing, and, and when the game first started, I told them not to lose their energy, and that we kept it all four quarters. You gotta talk about this belt, belt. What's up with that? This my, this is my, uh, this is what we won for Battle of Bowl Week, but I call it Ali versus Frazier. We Ali, and down goes Frazier. Ah. <laughs> TCU fans love that. James, what was your biggest source of motivation coming into this game for this defense? Because you guys played lights out. Uh, we just wanted to send the seniors out in the bang and uh, just put on for TCU. And uh, it's a wonderful team, wonderful fans, and we were just able to come out and uh, communicate and compete. Well, they love you. What do you have to say to them? We love y'all. TCU, this is not the end, just the beginning.
Coach told me that you guys had to listen for weeks about this old Miss team. And you guys certainly had a chip on your shoulder. How did you use that to motivate you? Uh, we knew that uh, we was well prepared. We knew that, uh, that we just played hard and we just came out and executed. We'll be able to get the W. All right, congratulations. Congratulations to TCU, to all the players of the game. And thank you very much to the Chick-fil-A Bowl for all of its hospitality. Forty-two to three, TCU wins the 2014 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Yep. You got it. <clears throat> yeah. Right. We'll start with defense. Yep. 